My buddy's taking care of me. I'm gonna go ahead and rip this board down to 10 inches. Ready, boss? Yep. I'm just gonna get that line right all the way to the end. I can't see it. I'm gonna start off with pencil and marker. Well. size. That's good. I'll one more. This one you don't have to hold it for. Thank you. My van away. <laughs> <laughs> if I were framing this for a doorway, um, or if I had a second floor or anything where I really have a lot of weight on there, I would go ahead and put jack studs on the sides here. And what I mean by that is a stud that goes from the ground or from my base plate up to where my header goes and it would, the header would sit on top of it. That would give it extra strength. I'm not gonna need that because I only cut out two studs and this is it's 36 inches wide and I don't have a tremendous amount of weight up there. Um, this is my garage. I don't have anything in there. It's empty and all of this wall is studded up So it's, it's plenty. I'm gonna put my two two by tens and I'm gonna run screws this way into there to lock it in And then when I put this part of my frame in right here It's this base part is sitting on top of the studs that I cut so it's plenty strong enough I made sure to take the crown side and put up on this Here's a perfect example of why you need a header across here, some type of header to hold these up. Even though it's not a tremendous amount of weight, there's still weight on there and this 2x4 is on flat. They're doubled but it's still on flat. So just that little bit you can see it's already dropped down a tiny bit. So when I jam this in here and get it tight it's going to bring it back up and this, the double uh, 2x10s will hold that. Let's get this ready. Get it up there. Okay. Let's see that easily puts it where it needs to be. I'll just tap it in place from the bottom and top, square it up. And I'll run a screw from there into here, and it's not going to go anywhere. get much better than that. Screws through here. I pre-drilled the stud so all I have to do is run into this. Just makes it a little bit easier, it's faster. Three screws in here on each side on both of them. Okay, now we're gonna get this. My next step is to get a clean cut right here so I can put my trim on the outside of my window. 
Now with this beam, normally I would laminate a beam if it was really holding up a lot of weight, like I said earlier. I would take two of these two bys, two by 12s most of the time, and I'd sandwich it with a half inch piece of plywood and that would give me my three and a half inches right here. Okay, so I didn't have to do that. This is gonna be plenty strong enough. Like I said, it picked this little sag up right here and it's gonna hold it, it's gonna be tight. Be very careful when you're cutting this. When I go in, I'll go in on this side of the line and back up real slowly and catch that line so I don't cross it. Now we'll put our blackboard back in the same place. We're just about ready to put the window in, but I just, I'm gonna take this blackboard out of here and I'm gonna put OSB board. If you had plywood, that's great. I just had scrap OSB around the house and I ripped some strips so I can case this around with that, secure my window and then I can, before I put my window in, I can use tight seal the tape and put all around here. It'll stick real well on this OSB where it will not stick on this stuff because this stuff just falls apart. So I'm going to just score it around and we're going to pull it out, get this junk out the way. You see how soft it is? It's easy. I could just take and knock a hole through this and walk right through my wall if I wanted to. Some flashings will require you to prime it first. Uh, this one doesn't. I have the smooth side out, so it's going to stick on here really well. If I thought it wouldn't, I would prime this and then come back and put it on. But I've done this before, and it sticks well on the smooth side. I'm going to start off with this corner here, and I'm going to take a small piece of tape, peel the backing off of it. Then I'm going to take it to where an inch and a half or so overlaps, hangs over, okay? Tuck it in the corners real well, get it to bond. And then I'm gonna take it from the corner and just slice it out. Pull it tight down here, pull it tight here. I have it the exact size. Okay. Put it on here real tight. From the corner, I feel where my corner is, and I'm going to just slice it out on an angle. 45 degree angle, somewhere around there, works well. I'll fold the top over and fold the bottom over. And I'm going to cut this side and do the same thing. This is how it should look when it's done. Everything is covered, there's nothing exposed at all on here. So, if water gets on here, it's gonna channel off. Get it right up top where I want it. I got a good overhang. I'm just gonna walk this down. Make sure you get, get this flat, completely flat on there. and You don't wanna leave any bubbles. Okay, same thing. We're going to slice this and have this wrapped 
on the top and bottom of these corners. I push it down in those corners. I'm going to slice it out, right? See, I don't go all the way to the corner. I come close to it. That way I can stretch some of that tar over the corner when I fold it. See how it covers in there? Okay. When I put my top corners in, sometimes I'll put them underneath if I think about it first, or you can put it on top. You, as long as you put your, your very top one in over that, you're fine. It's going to overlap. And uh, you're not going to have any problems anyway. Some people don't even put corner ones on the top, and it still works. So um, I just like to cover my bases, and it only takes a minute to put it on. All right. Get this one in. Last one. Same thing. Run it across here. Get my jab saw. This knife is awesome because I've got a good handle. Sometimes I really have to bear down on things and this comes in handy with that. There are times when I want a smaller knife, but this is great when I need a bigger one. And a lot of times on things like this, I need a bigger handle. This is not necessary, but I'll use a good siliconized acrylic uh, latex caulk. You can use silicone if you want to. I put it underneath all the way around so when I push my uh, trim on there I get a seal on the outside of it all the way around. It's just something to help make sure that no water gets back there. We're going to caulk on the outside of that anyway but I just like to seal it up right on the edge. And uh, here's a trick with your caulk or a little tip. I keep my caulk in the fridge because if you keep it at a cooler temperature it will not dry out so if this uh, you use it and you don't use it all you can put it in the fridge and it, it'll hold for a long long time also if you find you're working in the summer this will just keep oozing out and oozing out because it gets real thin when it's when it's uh, in the heat so if you keep it cool it's a lot more consistent and thick you don't have to worry about it running out on you when you're not using it. So we're going to tuck this in. Perfect. Okay, last one. Beautiful. Nice fit all the way around. I don't work with Ryobi, but I will tell you, this is one awesome little gun. I've had it for about, I don't know, a year and a half or so, and uh, it's never failed me. I'm going to take and run a little bead of caulk all around my channel here and on the outside because I'm going to paint this and uh, I want it sealed up really well. It's all completed out here and everything's sealed up. Now all I have to do is come back and paint it, which uh, I was planning on doing anyway because I started painting the house and I hadn't addressed this side because I was waiting to get this window in. Now that it's in, I can come back and paint it. On my next video, I'm going to show you how to put the trim on here and case this in. That's real simple too, a lot easier than doing this, and it really dresses it up. Well, as usual, don't forget to subscribe, check out paulstoolbox.com for all my archive videos, and I will see you on the next project.